Now, if you're into 300 blackout, stick around because I think you're really going to enjoy this video. Now, if you don't shoot 300 blackout, I guarantee you've at least heard of it. It's getting a ton of attention right now. It's a great close range caliber. It allows you to cycle a short barrel AR with subsonic suppressed rounds, so very quiet. It hits hard. It's awesome for all around close range work. The question I've always had, and the question I get a ton in the comments, is what's it capable of at distance? Now, up until fairly recently, I didn't own anything 300 blackout, so I've got very little experience there. But recently, I was able to get my hands on my buddy's 9 inch old school AAC upper, some subsonic ammo, some supersonic ammo, and plenty of wide open space. So, my goal in this video is to stretch out a short barrel 300 blackout and see what it's capable of at distance. Now let me know in the comments, before we start shooting, how far do you think we'll be able to consistently push supersonic rounds and subsonic rounds, and which do you think will perform better at distance? I'd love to hear it. I really have no clue what to expect until we start shooting. Now from here, we're going to move into a quick gear review where I'll give you a close-up look at what I'm going to be shooting. Then we'll move down to 100 yards with both the subsonic and the supersonic ammo. We'll shoot for groups, confirm our zero, and we'll push out on steel from there. So. I hope you'll join me. I am really excited. I have no clue what to expect out of this package. I think we'll learn together. So let's get started. So before we start shooting, how about we take a close up look at the gear we'll be running in this video. For an upper, I've got an old school AAC 9 inch 300 blackout upper. I don't own this upper. It's one that I'm borrowing from my buddy. And from what I understand, this upper is circa early 2010s when 300 blackout was coming on the scene. So in my mind, a really cool piece of history, especially relative to 300 blackout. This nine inch barrel will be the shortest barrel I've ever tried to push out to distance, so I really have no clue what to expect, and I think we'll learn together what it's capable of. Now the suppressor I'm running is a Surefire 762 SOCOM Mini. You've seen it on the channel many times. It's a very versatile suppressor, and I feel like it'll pair really well with 300 blackout and this upper. It does feel a little bit awkward to put a Surefire on an AAC upper, Given back in the day when I was first getting into the suppressor market, these were two powerhouse companies that were going back and forth trying to get your business. But that said, today, I think it'll pair up perfectly. The lower is my Knight's SR15 SBR lower. Again, it's been on the channel many times, and it's equipped with a Knight's two-stage trigger. Bipod is an AccuTac. I've also equipped the rifle with a long-range arms send-it level. I want to make sure I don't have any cant in the rifle when I'm taking those longer-range shots. I want to remove as many errors as possible and having this on the rifle will allow me to do that. Finally, the optics package is one that I'm really excited about. I've low key been in the market for an LPVO, but I was hesitant to spend the money due to previous experiences with a couple of different scopes on the market. Right on actually reached out to me and said, hey, if we send you a couple of scopes, will you be able to use them in your videos? Will you give us some feedback? Will you give us your thoughts and provide a look to the viewer? So full transparency, the scope was sent to me. I did not purchase this, but I felt like it was a perfect match for a 300 blackout that we're gonna to try to push to distance. Being a one to 10, it allows us to have that short range capability at one X, but also magnify up and then use the Christmas tree style reticle to take those longer range shots. So I really have no clue what to expect out of this optic. I'm really excited about it. And I'll provide my thoughts as we go through the video. And my plan is, as I get more experiences with these right on optics, to provide a review video at some point down the road. So. Very excited about this. My initial impressions are very positive. The glass seems really nice. The clicks are very positive. And so far, I think it's going to be very capable at distance. I can't wait to show you in the video. Now for ammo, we're going to be running for supersonic. This is Remington 125 grain OTM, which I believe is actually a 125 grain SMK that was designed for 300 blackout. Should have a velocity of about 2,000 feet per second. So that's what we'll be running as a supersonic load. The subsonic load, I found this on Palmetto State Armory's website for a decent price. This is AAC 220 grain Sierra Match King. Should be running about 1,000 feet per second. So very capable bullet, 1,000 feet per second. Should cycle the rifle and be very quiet, but I cannot wait to see how these perform at distance. So from here, we'll move down to 100 yards. We'll shoot each of these on paper, and then we'll push out on steel, and I'll take you along for the journey. So I hope you'll stick around. I'll give you my thoughts at the end. So before we push out to steel, Let's take a look at how the rifle shoots on paper at 100 yards. So I'll shoot five rounds of the 125 SMK to give you a look at the group, as well as fine tune my zero. I should be close, but we'll adjust if we need to to get a solid 100 yard zero. I just finished up chronographing this rifle and these rounds are running right at 2000 feet per second. So definitely supersonic. Now the dot I'm shooting down there is a one inch dot. 
and it fits the center dot in this reticle just about perfectly. So let's see what we can do. We didn't lock back on the fifth round, but from what I can see, very respectable group. Looks like about two MOA out there. I am going to adjust down probably two tenths and call that zeroed, but I'll give you a close-up look. From here, let's push out on steel with the supersonic 125 SMK. First up will be 200 yards on a two-thirds zipsic. My app is calling for one mil of elevation hold. It's basically dead calm right now, so I'm just going to hold dead center on the plate. One mil and see what happens. Scope is set to 10x. Impact. Impact. I'm going to believe that's five. All right, so beautiful five round group right at one mil below my 100 yard zero, so very easy. Let's push back to 300. Now I've moved back to 300 yards, still on the two thirds zipsic. My app is calling for two and a half mils of elevation. Wind flag is pushing basically straight back, so first round I'm gonna hold dead center. Two and a half mils of elevation. Impact, a little bit left. Favor to the right. Impact. Impact. So, no problem at 300 yards with the supersonics. We made an easy work of two and 300 yards, so I've pushed back to 400 yards. Still on the two thirds zipsic. My app is calling for 4.4 mils, and my wind flag is pushing straight back, so I'm going to go 4.4 to center and hold dead on for wind. Off the left edge. I'm gonna hold right edge. Impact. Can't see exactly where that's at on the plate, but I think it's in the low right corner. I'm gonna hold a little bit less wind. Like those are on the left edge. Impact. That should be five. So we missed with windage on the first round, connected with the next four once I dialed in my wind, but from what I can see, 4.4 elevation looks pretty solid. Looking at the group, I think when I push back to 500 yards, I'm going to swap to the full size Ipsic. So let's do that now. All right, so I've moved back to 500 yards. We've got a full-size Ipsic set up. Now my app is calling for 6.6 .6 mils of elevation. And to shoot this direction, I actually rotated right about 45 degrees. So now instead of the wind coming from straight behind, my wind flag is definitely pushing right to left. Uh, I can see it pretty clear there. So I think this first round, I'm gonna hold 6.6 .6 elevation and right, probably 1.5 mils. So let's see what happens here. 6.6 and 1.5. Ooh, low. Drop down at about the feet. Windage looked good. I'm going to go up to 7 mils. 7.2. seven and a half. Impact. Seven 
impact. Impact. So I can't really see those impacts from here. I'll have to see what the plate looks like up close, but definitely more elevation required than the app called for. Ultimately though, we went four for five at 500 yards with the 125 grain super. Let's push back further. So I was pretty impressed with the performance at 500 yards. With that, I pushed back to 600, still on the full size Zipsic. Now, given how far off our actual drop was versus the app, I went in and made a BC adjustment, and I'm gonna shoot that here versus what you saw earlier in the video. So now with the adjusted BC, my app is calling for 10 mils of elevation, and my wind flag has absolutely died. It feels perfectly calm, so I'm actually gonna hold dead center at 10 mils for this first round. Pushing a little, I'm gonna hold right edge at 10 mils. Impact, first round. Impact. That's impressive. Impact. Impact. off the left edge. So four out of five at 600 yards. I was fully expecting that bullet to be running out of steam here, but given that hit percentage, let's try to push further. With that, I've moved out to 700 on the full size Ipsic. Now my app with the adjusted BC is calling for 13.6 mils, but I only have 11 available in the reticle of this right on one to 10. So with that, I wanna hold at the 10 mil mark. So I'm gonna dial up 3.6 on the elevation turret, and that will allow me to hold at the 10 mil mark in the reticle. So I've got 3.6 on the knob, plus 10 in the reticle, gets me to a total of 13.6 for this uh, 700 yard shot. And as you can see, my wind flag is dead calm. So I'm gonna favor right edge again, just like we did, and see what happens. Now I'm losing my light, so Pretty difficult shooting, but let's give it a go here at 700 yards. Off the left edge and a little bit low, so let's go 10.2 and right 0.6 to center. Impact. Impact could have been a T post hit with a ricochet. Let me go to 10.5. That left edge. Impact. So three confirmed hits out there. I'll take a look when I get up close at the plate at what that ricochet might have been, but pretty crazy performance out there at 700 yards with a nine inch 300 blackout and a one to 10 LPVL. So how about we fire up the AAC 220 grain SMK subsonic ammo. We're here at 100 yards. I just ran five rounds across the chronograph that averaged 970 feet per second. So definitely subsonic. They're really fun to shoot, very quiet. I want to give you a look at how they group on paper and give me a chance to fine tune my zero. So I fully intended to show you my zero process so that you could see what the difference between the supersonics and the subsonic rounds were, but it took longer than expected. My first five rounds weren't even on the paper. As it turns out, I'm up 3.2 mils from my supersonic zero to get these subs in the ballpark. So with that, let's do five rounds on that one inch dot at 100 yards. So 
looks like maybe a two, two and a half inch group down there. I probably need to bump to the right a tenth or two, but solid group. Let's take a close up look and then we'll push out on steel. All right, here's a close up look at our 100 yard performance with the 220 SMK subsonic ammo. As you can see overall, that's about a two and a quarter inch wide group by about two and a half tall. So call it two and a half MOA. I am going to bump that to the right, say two tenths, but from here, let's push out the steel. So let's put our first subsonic rounds on steel. I've got the two thirds Ipsic at 200 yards. My app is calling for 5.1 mils of elevation. And my wind flag is pushing straight back, so I'm going to hold dead center. Impact on the right edge. Impact dead center. Impact. Off the left edge. Not sure why that one went off the left edge, but we got four impacts at 200 yards, holding five mils of elevation. That's crazy compared to the supersonic rounds from yesterday. All right, so we've pushed back to 300 yards with the 220 SMK. Pretty wild. The app is calling for 10.5 mils of elevation to 300 yards. Windage flag is pushing us a little bit to the right, so I'm going to favor left edge. And let's see if we can connect. Two thirds Ipsic, 10 and a half to center, left edge. Impact. Impact. Looks like a low left. Let me give it a little more elevation. Off that left edge, I'm going to hold dead center. Low left. Impact on the right edge. So three out of five at 300 yards. Look like my drop was a little bit more than the 10.5 it called for. So I may have to adjust my BC, but that's pretty wild for 300 yards. Now let's try to push out to 400 on the two thirds Ipsic. So my app is calling for some pretty crazy elevation at 16.4 mils. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dial all 16.4 into the scope so I can just hold windage left and right. So there we go, 16.4. Now my wind flag is pushing a little bit to the right. So I'm going to start by holding a half mil left. So basically holding left edge of plate, 16.5. Here we go. So that went right up over the head. Good wind call. Elevation need to drop down. Look like a full mil, but let's go a half. I believe that was an impact. Off that right edge. So elevation definitely looks high. I'm going to go down a full mill. Impact. So a full mill low and a mill left. I believe that was an impact on the plate. The plate's moving. Could have been a T-post. We'll have to review the GoPro. Full size Ipsic out there at 500 yards. And I've got 10 rounds loaded up. I feel like the consistency might be dropping off a little bit. So I want to see how we can connect out of 10 at 500 before we determine if we'll push further. So the app is calling for 22.4 mils. I'm currently at 16.4. I'm going to dial that out. 22. And all I've got in the scope is 22.2. So I'm going to have to favor a little bit high. And my wind flag is pushing just a little bit to the left. So I'm going to favor right one mil. One mil to center. Here we go. 
Oh, just off that. Yeah, it's basically dead on. So let me go dead hold. Impact. Impact. Low right. Impact. Impact. Way high. Let that drop low. Way low. Seems like the consistency might be dropping off. That right edge. So, if I remember right, I believe we got four impacts out there. So, quite a few. But as you can see, it seems like the consistency just isn't there like the supersonic rounds were. So, I think we'll push out to 600 yards. Given my scope is max, I should have enough elevation to at least hold for six. Let's see what we can do out there. All right, so we pushed back to 600 yards on a full-size IPSC with a subsonic ammo. We had decent performance at 500 yards, but again, I really feel like the consistency is dropping off. Let me know in the comments what you think, because it seems like my elevation just kind of bouncing around out there. Now, my app is calling for 28.6 mils. My scope is topped out at 22.2, so I'm actually going to dial back down to 22, and that'll allow me to hold 6.6 .6 in the reticle. And my wind flag. Is pushing just a little bit to the left, so I'm going to favor right, just right edge of plate. And again, I've got 10 rounds loaded up. Let's see if we can connect with any of these. I'm going to hold on the plate, wind flag still. Perfect conditions for shooting. Wow, first round impact. Just over the head. Impact. Just that left edge. That one dropped way low. Over the head. No call. This is tough. These don't make a ton of splash. Impact. Impact. No call. Wow, so more impacts than I expected. They're at 600 yards. That was pretty decent performance. So how cool was that? You gotta let me know in the comments. What did you think about the performance of this rifle and 300 blackout out to distance? I'll give you my thoughts here in just a second in the shooting summary, but in the meantime, I wanna hear from you because I am super impressed. Now with that, let's move into a shooting review. Out of the gate, we shot the supersonic rounds at 100 yards and laid down an inch and a half group with five rounds, which I feel like is really solid accuracy for a short barreled fighting rifle like this. Velocity, a little over 2,000 feet per second, as you saw in the video, allowed me to push this thing out with the supersonic rounds to some pretty crazy distances. 
So from there, we moved out to steel at 200 and 300 yards with the supersonic round where we were 100% on our hit. So great performance out to 300 yards. At 400 yards, we had one miss, if I remember correctly, just a windage miss. Very solid performance there. Pushed on out to 500, 600, and 700 on a full-size Ipsic, where again, I was really happy with the performance. I felt like the consistency was there until about 700 yards, where we only went three for five. That's still much better than I expected. I fully expected this thing to start falling on its face about five and 600 yards. So to go three for five at 700 yards with a supersonic round exceeded my expectations. Enough that I decided to push out to 800 yards last night when the sun was setting. And that's where I felt like I really started to struggle with the supersonic round. Maybe that's because the round was transitioning into that transonic and subsonic stage. So maybe it wasn't that stable. Also, it was getting fairly dark. So I was starting to lose light through the optic made it a little bit difficult to see my impacts and correct. Either way, consistent performance out of the supersonic round out to 700 yards, I am very happy with. From there, we swapped over to the subsonic round, where at 100 yards, we laid down a two and a half inch, five round group with a velocity just below 1,000 feet per second. So again, really solid accuracy for a fighting rifle. And that velocity is below the speed of sound, so very quiet and a ton of fun to shoot. I pushed out on steel at 200 and 300 yards where I had a little bit of trouble. I only connected four out of five times at each distance. And what I found is the drop on that subsonic round is crazy compared to the supersonic round. If you remember at 200 yards, the supersonic round was one mil of elevation versus the subsonic was five. And then at 300 yards, the supersonic round was two and a half and the subsonic was 10. So it's crazy how fast that bullet is dropping and how slow it is. That time of flight is pretty wild, even at the shorter distances. Pushed out to 400 yards where I struggled a little bit. My elevation hold was a little bit incorrect. You saw me have to push down to make those two impacts. I was hoping for better, especially after how we saw the supersonic round perform, but I'll take two for five on a two thirds Ipsic with a short barreled subsonic round. I pushed out to 500 yards, on a full size Ipsic where I was actually really impressed and surprised. We connected four out of 10 times on a full size Ipsic at 500 yards. Then I pushed out to 600 yards where we did the same again, four out of 10. So not as consistent as the supersonic round, but I'm very impressed with the performance of the subsonic round. Now, given this is my first time out with a 300 blackout, I really have no clue what to expect out of the subsonic round. So I really wanna hear from you. Is that in line with what you've seen? Should I be trying different bullets? Is there anything I could do to perform better with the subsonic round? So let me know, because I would really like to try to push that subsonic further if there's something I can do. Overall, very happy with the performance of both bullets as well as this rifle. It's crazy how far you can push 300 blackout with consistency. Now that said, I believe one of the key components is actually this right on one to 10 scope. This was my first couple of days out actually using this optics. And my initial impressions are I am very impressed. For the money, the performance out of this thing was actually awesome. The glass was super clear out to six, seven, eight hundred yards where you saw me shooting. I was able to make my corrections and make my hits. The reticle is really easy to use. It's clean but effective. And then when I dialed, I felt like the elevation that I dialed is what I was asking for. So I haven't done a tracking test. I don't feel like I need to because I felt like the performance was in line with where it should be. So you'll see more from this optic on the channel because my initial impressions are very positive and I want to keep shooting it and give you my thoughts. Now, if you've made it this far, I appreciate you sticking around and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would ask that you help me grow this channel. We've seen a ton of growth recently and it's your interaction that's gonna allow me to do that. So if you like this video, hit me with a like, a comment, and if you really enjoyed it and you wanna see more of my videos, how about a subscribe? If you subscribe to my channel, there's a ton more content like this coming up and you'll be on the next list to see it when it drops. So. Finally, don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. I drop a lot of content about what I'm working on in future videos, and it's a great place for us to interact. And I've got a ton of video ideas actually through the Instagram DMs. Finally, if you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate you sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this one, and you'll join me in my next one. Thank you.